Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy Show. Step off. Oh my God, there I am. What's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. Technical difficulties abound here on the show. Hold on. I knew things were hokey and things were horrible when the picture was fuzzy. You know what you get for dealing with technology? First, there's my dog. Everyone say hello to the dog. He's circling the, the futon. Uh, my apologies on the broadcast. I don't know what's happening. We went to go live like uh, 10 minutes ago, nine minutes ago now. And suddenly I'm getting error messages on the Facebook. So I have no idea what's going on. Uh, please uh, uh, be patient with us, folks. We are attempting to figure out the deal here. And in the meantime, enjoy my dog chewing himself. You can even hear it. You get free sound effects here on the show. Yeah, man. That's not good. Hi. You see that? He's as if he's staying to attention. That's wicked, everyone. If he hears his name too much, he's going to come over here and hang out. Um, listen, my apologies for this, kids. Hopefully, it'll clear up soon. Um, everyone, keep your fingers crossed. Um, by the way, what's up? Welcome back to the show. Again, sorry for the technical difficulties. Hopefully, we'll get this thing up and running here very soon. Um, this was nothing your boy did. This was all the Facebook. Because Facebook's owned by a billionaire who's not the best person. He'd be listening. He's like, I'm listening. Someone shut that Tom guy down. And he pushes a big red button. He's like the big red. Who's the Is it Staples? Shut him down. That was easy. Apparently it is easy. I'm still fuzzy. I'm, I think maybe if I keep waving at the camera, it'll help. This moment of waving brought to you by Tom Clark's main event. Uh, before we start, well, you know what? We'll say a few hellos and maybe it'll clear up before we bring our guest on. Yes, we have a guest. Sugar Shane Odom. What's up, my friend? Chris, welcome back to the show. Guten Tag, Sandy, to you. I knew you were going to say that. Hope all is well in Germany. Jamel, how's life in Vegas? Alma, how are you today? Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about here, my friends. What's up, Chad? Chad, too bad. Chad, too bad, kids, has been released. There you go. We wish him well in his future endeavors. What's up, Toby? Oh, Robert, be patient, my friend. We got tons to talk about. Tons to talk about. Oh, Byron, what's going on? Is it Byron or Brian? You know why I ask? Because I've seen guys spell their name that way, and it's actually Brian, which is weird. Byron from Scotland. I love doing that. And I'm sure I'm butchering your accent, but my friend, it is really great to see you. I wish you could see me where I'm not so fuzzy. We'll work on this, kids. I promise you. Everyone, just please hold on. Sound by Shannon up in the house. What's going on? Fuzzy or fuzzy, Byron says. Maybe a little both. Bit of both. Timothy, what's up, my friend? Camille did retain. I, I don't have any idea what happened on that show, dude. What's up, Daryl? Molly, how are you? Good afternoon to you. Toby said I'm not showing up on YouTube. The you know, whole internet's out to get me, dude. I swear to God, they are. Carlos says having problems typing messages. Carlos, what you do in your personal life, if you have a drinking issue, that's none of my concern. The handshake, I'm playing, I'm teasing, relax. Chad, Chad, too bad, says I'll sign with AEW. They've only got so much room. Before I bring the guest on, everyone hit the heart button and the like button, and I get inboxed all the time. Tom, when are you going to go live today, pal? And guess what? If you hit the little bell, which means the notifications, you'd know by now. I'm not rude. I'm just to the point. So if you'll click the little bell thingy that you're looking at, guess what will happen? You'll get notified every time Tom Carr's main event goes live so you don't miss me waving like an idiot. All oh, this sucks. The people that hear the audio version of the show don't know the difference. 
By the way, let's get the ticker ticking. This is episode number 250. How about that? We are 50 weeks removed from the 200th anniversary celebration of this here very podcast. Live in the living color since 2014 and still going strong. There you go, baby. Let's bring on our co-host, co-hostest, co-hostess with the mostest. That's it. From Peaches and Power Bombs, kids, please make welcome Tina Miller. And her mic, there it is. What's up? How are oh, you? Hi, everybody. There, now you can actually hear me. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the kids want it. By the way, Tina, the kids, kids, it's Tina. Everyone say hello to each other. Hi. So um, the kids are probably going to want to blame you for the technical difficulties, but I'm not going to let them. I don't think so, because, you know, my feed looks great, so. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Tom. Mine's amazing. <laughs> Yes. Well, Toby says we finally have a nice looking host. Toby, I'll kick you on up out of here. Don't even <laughs> think I want. I'm quite an attractive man, Toby. Do you not think so? Man, <laughs> see where alleg see where the allegiances lie. He's already split. You see what I'm saying? So yes, uh, man, we got stuff to talk about. Just when you think yeah. a certain company can't do anything weirder, but I don't want to kick it off on a bad foot. Guess what's happening next Thursday? We'll talk a little bit about this before we get rolling today. Thursday, depending on where you are in the world, we know, I know we've got fans in Scotland, Canada, uh, and Australia, and England. Welcome all you guys and gals, as always, either live or after the fact. We appreciate you, as always. But Thursday, a week from yesterday, in this little country, we have something we like to call Turkey Day, Thanksgiving. So, Tina, what's the plans for Turkey Day on your side? Um, well, I'm at my mother-in-law's house, so we're going to, um, her and I are going to cook together on Wednesday and Thursday, and um, my brother-in-law will come over, and we're just going to have a nice little quiet Thanksgiving, so I'm looking forward to that. Nice. I, uh, we're doing uh, Thanksgiving with my mom, my stepdad, and my uh, niece and nephew tomorrow night. Um, oh, nice. We usually we're a week ahead for them, mm -hmm. and then I don't know what we're doing like basic family here at the house. I have no idea what we're doing at that point on because they live like an hour from us. Yeah. So it's easier to get together and coordinate schedules like a week out. Um, yeah. Usually we'll see them on Christmas Eve. Uh, yeah. But then like Thanksgiving, it's usually a week ahead or behind. So, and to get everyone in the spirit of the tradition and the spirit of the holiday, we have another guest on the show. Check this out. I think he no. upstaged me. Did he? Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he stole your thunder. And no, his name's not Tom Turkey. Don't even want to try to be cute with me. You think I haven't heard those jokes before? <laughs> I've heard them all, okay? One more time for effect. <laughs> oh, I should have called that the hot turkey button. Wouldn't yeah. that be cool? Yeah, the Same. hot turkey button. Same. Byron says Thanksgiving not really celebrated here. Byron, I've never thought about Scotland not having a Thanksgiving. It, why? I mean, why would I think they would have one? But that's interesting. Byron, have a turkey leg and celebrate in the spirit of the event next Thursday. We're going to let you do that. You don't have to tell any of your friends. They're going to think you're weird. Unless you just commonly walk around with a big freaking turkey leg in your hand. Shane is, is spouting off some rhetoric about the Cowboys. I'm not putting that comment on my show, Shane. <laughs> have you lost your mind? No. Uh-uh. No. Listen, we got lots of stuff to talk about. Shane trying to start a fight. Mm. I mean, it's all falling apart. Um, usually I hawk my podcast stuff. Is there any Peaches and Power Bombs podcast merch yet? What's going no. on over there? What? No, we we don't have any merch yet. We are we just started back in May. Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to get our feet, you know, get off the ground. So I you know, you. it's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but would think, but, um, yeah, it, you know, we're just, we're just trying to get more. There's a lot of, so. there's a lot of us out there. Um, a lot of us talking. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, but you know, you got to make your own little noise in the world where you can. So mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. We're making a little noise. So there you go. Um, now we've had the fun Turkey. Now we get to have the bad news. Yeah. WWE releases again. 
I did this like two weeks ago where I said, again, small caps. Here we go again. If you haven't heard, now you're about to. John Morrison, Swerve Scott, Ashante Adonis, uh, Tegan Knox, Drake Maverick, Top Dollar, Shane Thorne, and Jackson Ryker. Hit Row's gone now. Um, Drake Maverick's gone again. I, I, you know, I, ugh. These these guys and gal are already starting to respond and react online. What do you make of this? I mean, once again, uh, uh, Tina, they've been given the reason of budgetary cuts. It's what do you think about this? Bowl. Yeah. To me, it feels like they're trying to get rid of anything that uh, Triple H personally touched to me. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. That's, uh, it's, uh, I don't get that. I just, well, I guess I get that to some degree because let's be honest, um, they're, they're trying to change this brand, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I just don't, I just don't understand it. I don't, I don't know what we're going for here. I, I mean, uh, all this talk about, well, Tom, one day Triple H is going to run this company. Listen, I don't know what some of you people smoke in your free time. Who am I to judge? Please stop. Mm-hmm. Triple H isn't taking over anything. And if you need more proof of that, read the banner at the bottom. Like you said, he's going after Vin- – they, they, meaning him and this Tony guy, or, or was it – what's Nick. his name? Nick, excuse me. Nick Khan, no relation. Are going after Triple H's signees. If this doesn't tell you something, I don't know what will. I mean, are you keeping up with NXT 2.0, by the way? Not To be honest, not really, just because it hurt my feelings. And I haven't gotten over the breakup yet, so I'm going to have to need a few more weeks, I guess. Yeah. I, I heard I there are parts of it that are good, but, you know. Well, this thing where they're they're refusing to tell you that he's Rick Steiner's son. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. And now it's become such an inside running joke that it's it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and they, they're having fun with it. I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, Jamel in Vegas says budget cuts, but my WB stock was up this morning. Oh, oh, Jamel be playing the market. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Byron says Swerve Scott should be all late. Byron, thank you, my friend, for bringing this up. So let me ask you, Tina. There's a there's a couple of train of thoughts out there, and I spoke to Phil a little bit about this last night. A couple of train of thoughts that are existing on this. One, okay, three. We we rewind. Back when AW first started and this company, WWE, meaning this company, WWE, it began signing all this indie talent. And I said, along with a whole lot of other people, we know why they're doing this. They're loading up that locker room so the other guys can't have them. Yeah. But at some point we knew the scales would tip and they'd be too heavy. They would have to unload. Are, do you think that they're unloading so much talent for two reasons? One, because they know AW, AW can't sign them now. And that's why, why not unload when you know the other guys can't sign them? Now you don't have anything to worry about. Or number two, are they doing all this as some sort of a ploy against the other company? I mean, hoping that they will sign them and then it will in some weird way hurt AEW because they'll take on too many talents that they can't do anything with. It'll sink the ship. What do you think about these theories? I don't think it really has anything to do with AEW. I think that to me, it looks like, um, they're trying to completely tr- transform the company. So they want to uh, build up their own cookie cutter wrestler or cookie cutter sports entertainer, I guess you would say. So they're getting rid of people who might have um, made a name for themselves on the indies because so, they want, they have a specific goal of what their superstar, what they want their superstar to look like. So anything, anyone that has their own creative. I don't know anyone who has their own thoughts or whatever it it feels like, or I don't know. To me, it looks like that they're just wanting to get away from someone who's already established themselves outside and wants just to make their own thing. And also it, it kind of feels like that they want to sell eventually. So they might just be getting rid of the, the extra baggage, I guess you would say. Clearing out, uh, Clearing out what an NBA team would do, clearing out cap space. That's mm-hmm. kind of feels like that's what they're doing. Uh, meanwhile, they are still the only company to release anyone during a global pandemic. Yeah. In terms of pro wrestling. That's, I mean, besides Ring of Honor, you can't really count that, I don't think. But uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, 
Isaac says, I want to see Bray and Cross in AEW before anyone from this list. Swerve Scott is insanely talented. Uh, mm-hmm. When he was Shane Strickland, we knew he was insanely talented. He's still insanely talented. Um, the whole hit row thing worked because of Shane Strickland. Um, the players they put around him, not bad, but he's the star of that group. Mm-hmm. And he was making it work. And now mm-hmm. there's no group. So Toby with a good point. Problem is eventually jobs will run out. AW Impact MLW can only sign so many. And right. we often hear the term, Tina, move the needle. We hear it all the time. And I don't think we're in a I don't think we're in an era where we can legitimately say anyone can move the needle for anybody because this is not the business it was 20 years ago. The audience size is not the same. Crowds have cleared out. We're down to the diehards now, right? So right. Um, what do you think about that? Is there, I mean, if, if anyone can move the needle, it would be like, like a lightning striking kind of situation where no one expects it. Right. Yeah. Um, I, my personal opinion is I don't, I don't think that pro wrestling is ever going to be a household thing anymore where like everybody knows who these people are. Um, I don't think it's going to be a global phenomenon like that anymore. Maybe I'm just a pessimistic. I don't know. No, I, I think mean, you're, I think you're a realist. CM Punk didn't even, didn't even push AEW over the, over the edge. So no. if he can't do it, I don't know. And, and he's a realist. Not like, that's not like a diss on him or anything. No. And he's a realist also. He just made the comment uh, during a press conference after the show the other night that he believes that there's no such thing as, you know, casual fans anymore. I think he's right. I think he's right, too. You either Uh, watch it or you don't. That's it, exactly. Yeah. It's not like NFL where someone will say, I'll watch the game. I haven't watched it in a while. But no, it's no. Shan says, I I watched the first 2.0 and haven't watched since. It turns me off. I'm not... Mm -hmm. I support the talent, but I don't like care much for that brand. Belinda, how are you? Welcome to the show again. Um, Shane says, I thought I was watching a bad episode of World Series of Poker, but it was NXT. <laughs> Ooh. Toby says, nobody moves Neil anymore. Roman doesn't really have a huge impact. Right. Hard to say in that company. Um, because was anybody doing anything before they put the belt on him? I don't think they were. I mean... Yeah, no. I don't know. And plus, that company's got built in everything. And the way they run their booking, you could insert in no disrespect to Roman because he does great work. But let's be honest, you could insert anyone into that spot who can cut promos and put Paul Heyman next to him. Man, this sounds like a diss. But the way that company's set up, they don't hinge everything based on, well, how good is that guy? They base it on. We'll put him, we'll elevate him, we'll put him in such a spot, we'll make things work for his style. I mean, I, I don't know. It's nothing personal against him, but I just don't. To his point, I, no one's going to move it in that company either. Well, I mean, they, in their case, they don't want it to happen because they don't want anyone to become bigger than the company anymore. Yep, that's it. Because when they do, they want to, their eyes start to get big and they're like, what can I do? I'm going to move on to something even better you know john yep. cena was the last one so it's true yeah john was the last one to go and you know john put in a whole lot more time than rock did mm-hmm. but i mean both guys put i mean anytime you step between the rows, you're putting your life on the line i mean right. tonight could be it tonight could be it you don't know so mm-hmm. um but i think john's earned his break i think john's earned oh, his I career i like him a lot so um let's go on to bigger and by the way kids all you know, best of luck to everyone on this list. I know Jonah has landed, the former Bronson Reed has landed a deal with NJPW. Good on him. That's good. He made an impact at last Saturday's show, pretty big impact. So he's he's going to be on the uh, NJPW Strong Nemesis card. We'll talk about that just a little bit here in a few minutes. But yeah, um, I like almost everyone on this list with maybe one exception, but we won't get into why. So good luck to them. We'll see what happens. AW Full Gear Results. You reached out to me. I did. uh, And it's all good because I kept promising you and Sarah I would have you guys on. I never have. And for no other reason, I just, 
not that I didn't think about it, but sometimes we can't get schedules to match up and right. everything. But um, I, I wanted to definitely have you on for this. Um, let's run through the card real quick, um, okay. and then I'll get your reaction. We don't have to break down every match or anything. Okay. Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa defeated Jamie Hayter and Nala Rose by pinfall. MJF defeated Darby Allen in a singles match. The Lucha Brothers, Penta El Zeromedo and Ray Phoenix, with uh, Alex Abrahantes defeated FTR with Tully by pinfall. Brian Danielson, by the way, that was for AW World Tag Team Titles. The titles did not change hands, of course. Brian Danielson defeated Miro, AW World Championship Eliminator Tournament, and now he becomes, of course, the number one contender, top contender, I guess number one contender for the AW World Title. Christian Cage and Jurassic Express defeated the Super Click um, by pinfall in a Falls Can Anywhere match. Cody Rhodes and Pack. Defeated Malachi Black and Andrade El Idolo. The tag team match. Dr. Britt Baker. Man, I was not ready. I, I kick myself. Every time I come up on her name, I kind of forget. I'll throw this in here. The kids are calling me out. Dr. Britt Baker. There we go. With Rebel and Jamie Hayter defeated Ty Conti to retain the AW World's Women's Championship. CM Punk defeated Eddie Kingston. The Inner Circle defeated the men of the year and American top team in a Minneapolis street fight. And your main event kids, Hey man, Adam page defeated Kenny Omega to become your brand new AW world's heavyweight champion. Tina, what did you think of full gear? Overall, I thought it was a really decent show. It was a lot of fun. Um, my brother-in-law and my nephew watched it with me and this is the first time my brother-in-law's watched wrestling since the 90s, and he was glued to it the entire time. He was having a really good time, so that was nice to see that, you know, because he, he was more of the casual fan back then, not like we're, you know. So um, just to see to see that reaction, you know that they're doing something right. So mm. I thought it was a good show. I thought it was too long, but, and there was a match or two that either went too long or I thought that it didn't need to be there at all. But mm. other than that, it was really good. What would you, what, what would you have cut? What would you have said? I would, um, I would have gotten rid of the inner circle and the American top team match. Mm. It was a big mess. Um, those MMA fighters didn't know what they were doing. No. And, um, they missed a lot of spots and you could hear Jericho junior junior, yeah. you know? So it was like, yeah, it was a big mess. But. The shortest match on the, to your point, the shortest match on the car was 12 minutes, 32 seconds. I mean, yeah. whew. longest match was the main event at 26, 35, mm -hmm. excuse me, 25, excuse me, 25, 35. So that was your longest match on the car, but every match was, uh, my apologies. Shortest match was Punk and Kingston at 11 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Ah, wow. There you it go. didn't need to be longer than that either. It was yeah, they... perfect the way it was. Favorite match on the card? Is that one it? Um, or not? It was my favorite moment. Uh, it wasn't really a match. It was more of a, of a brawl and a fight. I think my favorite pro wrestling match was MJF and Darby Allen. Hmm. Yeah, I'll buy that. Um, let's get some comments here. Alma says full gear was pretty good. Match of the night, Darby versus MJF. Also, Punk versus Kingston. New Hangman was going to win. Well, this this past Wednesday, they were in his hometown. So that kind of tells you all you need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert believes the tag match with Cody didn't need to be on the show. What's your thoughts on the whole? I mean, that match was clunky. It was a bit rough. And I mean, regardless of how the crowd that, reacted to Rhodes. But that was one of the ones that I felt like didn't necessarily need to be there. They well, unlike the other one that I mentioned, they didn't really do a whole lot of building for this match. So it didn't seem like it was necessary. Mm. And I still like Cody Rhodes. I'm going to throw controversial out there. I like Cody Rhodes. And he didn't take the pin. I mean, he didn't do the pinning in this match. It was Pac. So mm. I'll throw that out there too. But I still think that it should have been Malachi Black, Black, Black and Andrade who won the match. So I was a little confused on the finish. Um, I like Cody a lot. And, I, you know, um, I gave him props on the show more than once, uh, but I've given props on the show for being honest with fans. That's one thing this company is extremely good at is just being mm -hmm. honest. That's 
you know, for all the crap that ECW caught and they deserved a lot of it, they were always honest with the fans. Paul wasn't honest with the talent, but they were always honest with the fans. If someone mm-hmm. wasn't there, they came out and told you. If someone yeah. stood them up and, and stood up the booking, they came out and told you. They didn't run from anything. I like that AW is transparent or as transparent as they can be to be a pro wrestling company. And Cody came right. out that night, cut that promo and said, look, I'm not turning. John never said that. Cena never. Nope. Cena would come out and say things to the effect of people want me to be a different way or a certain way. and I'm not going to do that. I don't think he ever looked at the fans and said, I'm not turning. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that, you know? Yeah. Um, personally, I like Cody a whole lot. Um, yeah. I've met him on one occasion and he was very kind to me cool. and I was very stressed out in the situation I was in. So, and um, he was still kind to me, even though I was like strung out. So <laughs> I really you're, appreciate that. Your tag team partner from Peaches and Power Bombs, Miss Sarah Hirsch. Sarah, yay! Uh, everyone, please please be sure you follow their podcast. It'd be greatly appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, Molly talking about the confrontation between Punk and MJF on Wednesday. I have mixed feelings. Stop! You tell me you didn't like that. Are you kidding? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Oh, okay, I yeah. loved it. It was yeah. great, but I still have mixed feelings on the match or or who you think is going to win. Um. It happening at this point in time. Hmm. You know, the good news is, I mean, what's, what is their next big event? Um, Revolutions either at the end of January or February or something, isn't it? They got a long time. I mean, by the time we get there, this thing could be, you can't wait to see it. It's not that I just, I don't think it should have been happening now. Hmm. They Um, do tend to have a lot of one-offs, don't they? They do the one match and move on to the next guy. Anyone who follows Peaches and Power Bombs or anything knows my take on Eddie Kingston. I have a very emotional connection to him because I suffer from depression and anxiety too. And this storyline that he had with with CM Punk, to me, the story that they were telling, it looked like CM Punk was the physical embodiment of the emotional and mental distress that Eddie Kingston goes through on a daily basis. You're not worthy. I'm disappointed in you. You're just a bum. You have all the talent in the world, but you fail. When you have depression and anxiety, you tell yourself that stuff every single day. Mm. I'm not upset that he lost this match. I'm upset that they just moved away from it so quickly because to me, it looked like there was unfinished business with this storyline. So I'm just a little disappointed. They threw you a bone by having Punk offer him his hand, which was, I guess if they had to move on, that was their way of of Punk saying. But Eddie walked away. Yeah. Which doesn't really help Eddie because it it could have been... Because if without words, that was Punk saying... Hey man, you brought it. I nothing but respect. Right. And then Eddie walks. Now it's back on Eddie that, hey, come on, Eddie. This the guy, yeah, he you may not have liked what he said, but he's a stand up guy. He could have walked away too. Yeah. So it kind yeah. of it puts him in a weird spot. It does. And the only way I will be okay with this is if they kind of give Eddie Kingston a similar comeback story as what they did with hangman adam page in the past couple years where he get up and then he'd fall down and then he'd get up and then he'd fall down if they do kind of something similar with eddie where he's gonna he's gonna be struggling for a little while but he's gonna eventually get back up to here then i'm okay with that i'll just have to be patient but you know i don't know what they're gonna do so i'm just sitting here like stressed out and worried about it so um, someone just asked, Chris which says, isn't Eddie hurt? The latest, according to Eddie, he's not no. hurt. Um, supposedly his scare. shoulders. Yeah, the, the rumors were his shoulders, but that he says he's fine. So um, let's see. Toby says maybe Eddie comes back differently, like Punk brought him out of it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he won't be okay, okay, but maybe he'll be in a better spot. But then there was that thing backstage with 2.0, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. I mean, oh, he's so good. He's so good. He is. Uh, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed the show. I mean, I, you know, I don't 
I say it didn't beat all out for a couple of reasons. One, I no. don't think it did. No, it didn't. Um, two, I'm biased. I was there and felt when you feel the energy, it's a different, mm -hmm. different vibration. But like, um, I really enjoyed this show. I, I was, people were uh, um, Christian and Jurassic Spread. Man, what a match. I'm like, why would anyone sit back in judgment on these guys and say, oh, blah, blah. come on. Christian knows the big stage. Just because I'm going to rant for a second. Just because you got these diehard WWE guys who look at Christian and give him the once over and say, Psh, listen, all due respect to Edge, Christian's the workhorse. I'm sorry. Edge is the pretty guy. He's got the great hair and he's a good worker, not taking anything away from him. Christian was the workhorse of that team. That's how I feel. He was the one taking the heat in all those matches. He may not be as flashy, but he's so good between the ropes. He, I don't yeah. think he ever gets his just due. No, you can't even tell he's however old he is. It's unbelievable. That's why I was telling my brother-in-law. I was like, I think that guy is either late forties or early fifties. This is ridiculous. Or 35. I mean, how do you, I don't yeah. know. Like, it's hard to know. Like you're yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Tim says, I love Brian Danielson as a heel. AW needs another big, huge heel star. I couldn't agree more. They've got mm -hmm. to have some more strong heels. They got one now. Whoo. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, don't expect Danielson to have a, a faction around him anytime soon because he's rolling solo, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked that. I liked his uh, little uh, promo against the Hangman Wednesday night. That was good. Sugar Shane says, Brian mentioned WrestleMania, instant heel turn. Yeah, it's awesome. This whole notion of we can't talk about the other stop. You know, this is no longer the 80s. It was fun in the 80s when they referenced each other and you but come on, people are too smart for that now. Shree says it all start off with Darby and MJF. There really wasn't a bad match at all. I, You know what? I'll agree with that. I don't think there was a bad match. There was some I liked over others. If you put me on the spot and say, what would you took off the card? I'm good. I'm okay. I, was it long? Yeah, but I'm used to long shows. I, You know, yeah. I don't care. Um, I enjoyed the show. Um, any final comments on uh, Full Gear? As we know, as you said earlier, Hey man, Paige finally got his day in the sun. Yes. So I was excited about that. I was too. Really, really good match. Again, we didn't expect any less and we didn't get any less. But there is only one little thing that I wish they did. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, it's really little and it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Instead of having Hangman put the one wing angel on Kenny and Kenny kicking out, I wish it was the other way around. Just because no one in AEW has kicked out of that yet. Mm -mm. So I I personally wanted to see Hangman kick out of the one wing angel. but And uh, I don't know if anyone in Japan has kicked out. I want to say Okada has, but I could be wrong. I think Okada has, or at least who was the other person I thought it was? I don't remember, but it, I think it was Okada. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, kudos to AEW for protecting that finisher. I mean, yes. we don't, don't get do a that. No, no, they don't. Um, Elvis says, is Hangman hey Page a star? Absolutely, all yes. day long. He does not yes. need the Dark Order, brother, at all. Um, I, I love the Dark Order. They serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. They're fun, and there's a lot of talented. There's a lot of talent in that group. So don't, disc don't discount them. Ray Ray's in the house. What's up, Ray? Tina was just saying that Adam Cole is not her favorite wrestler, Ray. What you going to do about it? What you going to do about it, Ray? Adam Cole's not my favorite wrestler. Oh, see, like she's not. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Adam Cole is Ray's favorite wrestler. Oh, okay. Well, that's oh, a good man. choice. I like him. Ray's disgusted. <laughs> Sorry. Ray's disgusted. <laughs> Everyone, please, if you have not, click the like button, the heart button, and click that notification bell so you, too, will be in the loop when the dog and I go live here, right here, on Racing Rumors slash Tom Clark's main event. So there you go. Um, we're going to move on here, kids. This segues into Kenny Omega taking some time off. Uh, multiple surgeries is the word we're getting now. He will not be at Triple Mania. Um, he's out of December 4th. Uh, mega tile defense against um, El Hio del, del Vikingo. And I miss, you know, I may have mispronounced it. December 4th, uh, Triple Mania. 
Uh, he's 38. I didn't realize he was 38, honestly. Unsure of what the course of action would be uh, to head a variety of injuries he has been working through. So uh, shoulder, knee, and abdomen. He, I mean, when's the last time he took any time off? You know. So to that point, I think he's earned a little bit of a break. So we'll see what happens in the interim. Mm-hmm. Um, another note on Ishii. Or this is this was a highlight for me being a New Japan guy. Tell me here, Ishii, the Stone Pit Bull himself. He got the Brain Buster pinfall and got that thing over, and people popped for a Brain Buster pinfall in this country, who were so jaded by. The Young Bucks throwing 27 super kicks in a row. But Ishii got the freaking brain buster over. I I, I love the association with New Japan. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about the whole Orange Cassidy and the best friends coming into chaos? Just out of the blue, Okada invites them to join chaos. And you're like, what? Well, honestly, I, I, I don't watch a whole lot of New Japan. Um I'm starting to a little bit just because I want to know whoever all these people are that are coming in. And I'm really starting to become a fan of of that style. It's, it's, you know, a lot stiffer and I kind of like that. So, um, Mm. yeah, I like, I like all this new flavor of people coming in because it gives me a chance to be able to experience different types of wrestling and different, different, uh, performers, and just just see how how they um, work. And listen, everyone here who loves WWE and thinks they're the only company on earth, please listen to what Tina just said. She is willing to give these these guys a chance because she wants to educate herself. I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Elvis says, "What will you say when AW does their first massive cuts? Show me where they're going to, Elvis. Show me when it's coming. Tell me. If it happens, we'll talk about it." Who do you think would be released and why? That's not for me to say. I'm not going to get into that that issue. I never speculated in it for WWE. I'm not going to speculate for them. He says, why would it be Team Taz? I don't think that at all. I think Powerhouse Hobbs has a big future ahead of him. Um, yeah, so does Ricky, Ricky Stark. Starks. Starks is very good. And I love him. Sin Hook. That's all I can say. So, uh, yeah. Well, they should keep Hook because he's willing to share his chips. So he's a, you know, he's a people person. <laughs> when Punk that night is calling him out, he says, Sin Hook. There's like there's now a Twitter account, like the night of, and the Twitter account is at Sin Hook, I think. So yeah. <laughs> it's great. Um listen, we listen, E to your point, we don't know how this company's gonna handle business. Mm-mm. I just, and listen, if I'm wrong, so be it. I'll eat my words. It's whatever. I'm never claimed to be the end all be all of this stuff. But uh, I, I, if, if and when releases happen quietly, maybe one at a time, if it doesn't work out, it's not working out, but they've not released anyone during a pandemic. Neither is New Japan. New Japan's top executives, my friends, took pay cuts to ensure that none of their roster had to be released during the pandemic. What's that tell you? So, meanwhile, WB is getting richer by the day. Yep. Richer by the day. Releasing people a week before Thanksgiving, the holidays. Happy During Thanksgiving. During the pandemic. During yes. the pandemic. Happy Thanksgiving, kids. Enjoy paying what you're going to pay for everything right now with no job. He says, I do like Team Taz, but I think they should be. And I won't argue that. I think they'd make, I mean, uh, who, which, which are you talking about Hobbs and Starks? I'd be okay with that. It's a different kind of tag team in terms of styles, but I think they can make it work. Chris says, well, the Briscoe brothers signed with AEW. We're, we all continue to be in deep thought and prayer, asking God or whoever may be up there if she would please bless us with the Briscoes as all elite because the Briscoes are where it's at. And if you, my friends, are not fans of the Briscoes, as Tina has done with her own a, a New Japan stuff, Educate yourselves because them boys are the real deal. How much do you know about them Briscoe boys? Just a little bit. I'll send you some stuff. Okay, do it, please. So good. They're so good. They're automatic. When they're in the ring, they don't talk to each other. They don't have to. They're automatic. They're 100 miles an hour, but in a good way. Oh, that's good. They flow. There's a rhythm. Jay Briscoe with those eyes cutting a promo. It. Listen, you like Eddie Kingston? You're going to love and i'm talking about throw here's my money take it 
that's what you're going to do at Jay Briscoe. Like, good. Everybody back me up. The minute you see a Jay Briscoe promo, you're sold. And if you didn't know what he did for a living and all you saw was him talking, you would still be captivated, which tells you something. So there you go. I'll be done shilling for them boys now. Uh, Toby, with a great callback, they fired Punk on his wedding day, so Thanksgiving means nothing. Toby, right. preach! Right? Ugh. Preach, Toby. Carlos says uh, they were backstage. Them, them boys were backstage is what I heard also. Awesome. There you go. I am looking oh. for people to be emotionally invested in again. Oh, they can do it. They can do it. Uh, them, yeah. them boys versus FTR. They've been having a war of words online. Oh, great. Past- oh, man. That would be great. I mean, just uh, this can become uh, the Briscoe's podcast hour. I okay. better move on. <laughs> I better move on. Uh uh, just a second about NJPW Strong. Um, Nemesis is the card. Uh, it's coming up uh, really quickly on December 9th. There's uh, three matches been announced. The Fallen Angel, Christopher, Christopher Daniels, will take on Switchblade Jay White, leader of the Bullet Club, as we know. Uh, White issued the challenge to Daniels, and Daniels has accepted. This is going to be a fun match. And here's someone else free to, to watch, Tina, is Jay White. is so good. And before AJ, uh, AJF, MJF, Jay White was the best heel in the business. He may still be, but MJF is so good. Mm-hmm. Jay White's the real deal. Uh, he just, there's nothing likable about him. There's nothing redeemable about him. He is, he is, he's the kind of villain that we need. He's, he's different. He's very good in the ring. Oh, so good. Leading the Bullet Club. That's taller in of itself. Yeah. Um, the aforementioned Jonah, formerly known as Bronson Reed, will face David Finley. That'll be a good match for sure. And Alex Zane will take on Aria Davari. That's all we've got so far. So keep stay tuned to that, kids, if you're curious about Nemesis. They're updating the card all the time. Um, and I don't know how much you know about Chris Dickinson, also working for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Dickinson was injured at last Saturday's show. Um uh, so, yeah, and it was, I don't know if you could see it or not, but he came off the top of the frog splash last Saturday, not only a full gear, um, but also in JPW's Battle in the Valley um, in San Jose, California last Saturday night. Everyone was paying tribute to Eddie. He did the five-star frog, or five-star, Rob Van Dam. He did the frog splash off the top, and he completely blew out, like, his left leg. It's one of those oh. freak things. Oh, man. Oh, no. uh, That's horrible. I said a I said a bellum posterior wall fracture. Yeah. He said the process of dealing with the pain of the dislocation is unlike anything he's ever experienced. And he's been wrestling oh. for a long time. There is a GoFundMe up online for, to cover his surgery expenses. Uh, I don't have a link for you kids, but if you want to donate anything, I'm sure he would appreciate it. As most of you guys may or may not know, these men and women for the most part work without insurance Unless you're in AEW, it's a different story. So, all the best to Dickinson. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to some comments. Ray says, why let crew talk just to fire? And I called Jay Lethal so I get the no prize. Ray, you get to this week's no prize. Jay, Ray called Jay Lethal at the pay-per-view. So, there you go. Okay. Um, Jay Lethal in AEW is getting some different kinds of responses. I don't know how much yeah. you know about Jay, but Jay's got some serious... Accusations out there. I don't want to distract from what he can do in the ring because he's a he's one of the best of this generation in the ring, and I'll stick to that. But mm-hmm. outside the ring, there's some serious stuff being said. And in my opinion, Tony Khan may have rolled the dice. He probably knows more than I do. But who? What do you think about Jay Lethal on AEW? Um, I think it's interesting. Um, I don't know anything about the accusations i just you know saw what i read and everything but you know his i don't know i don't know it's, too much about him so it's a mess he uh yeah. there's certain female talents in ring of honor who have come out and said things and right you know uh you know, if he's guilty as a woman i i'm really sympathetic towards that because when something happens to us and we try to say something we're not always nine times out of ten we're not believed or yep. you know so I don't want to take away from that, but at the same time, you want to 
give everyone a chance to, you know, women can lie too, you know, but I'm not saying that they are or anything, but right. um, it's just a messy situation because everyone deserves to um, defend themselves, I guess you should say. So, yeah. And uh, again, Tony's a smart guy. I don't think he's done anything to show that he's had some questionable social media moments, but yeah. I think he's a smart guy overall, but he invests mm-hmm. money into a performer that he felt like couldn't be there or did something wrong. I I'm seriously doubting that. Yeah. Let's hit the AEW rampage preview for tonight. Okay. kids. In case you didn't know, uh, and we'll just, I don't think there's been much announced for this. No. Um, Adam Cole and Bobby fish versus Jurassic express that promo from last week or this past week. Uh, when fish started, fish started to do this and I go, Whoa, Whoa, we can't do that. We can't do, don't do that here. So good. Mm-hmm. so good what's the there, chances o'reilly end up in that company and they end up as a threesome again oh it, it's um it hasn't been confirmed but it looks pretty promising hmm. especially with with what they've been doing the little nuggets that they've been planning um with you know kenny says he's walking away for a little while and he says hold down the fort and adam cole just gets up there and goes okay boss and he's like uh no i was talking to the bucks not yeah. you and he's like Oh, so he ain't going to like that. <laughs> good on them it's for, uh, like good on them for sowing or planting some seeds. Mm-hmm. Like, let's don't just let Kenny leave. Let's do something in this promo to get him talking. Right. So it's smart. And he called him cleaner, which is not a nickname he's used in AEW. So yes, he has. there you go. He has. Um, oh, has he? Mm-hmm. All oh, because of the brooms. That's right. Yeah. 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 The girls with the brooms. I, how it didn't I last long. Yeah. How did I forget the girls with the brooms? And plus, you know, sent from the moment Cole got there, this notion that Cole was, oh, I can't wait till he turns on him. I'm like, this is something else Phil and I talked about if we did the 6M last night was uh, Cole's probably not turning face. Kenny's going to turn face because they're going to turn on him. So yeah. that'd make the most sense. Yeah. TBS Women's Championship Tournament quarterfinals match, Jade Cargill versus Red Velvet. Darby Allen versus Billy Gunn. And there's your Rampage card. That's what we know right now. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens tonight on Rampage. Um, ratings real quick, kids, and we'll get to another company that happens to run some something that's called or may be conceived as perhaps pro wrestling. Uh, this week, Dynamite 1117 on 1117, 984,000. Uh, up from last week's 913. Rampage is tonight, so we don't have numbers for you, but last week was 515. There's your ratings. You decide whether or not you care. Becky Lynch is still talking. Um, Yeah, Ariel Helwani's MMA Hour this week discussed and, and, and interviewed her. Quote, we don't like each other, meaning Charlotte. We used to. I'm sure she'd give you a different side, and I'll give you my side. My star was rising, and we were the best of friends. We were pals. We were chums. I threw that in. It all worked when she was on top, and I was below. We could all see the way things were going in 2019. People were really behind me, really rallying behind me. This turn would turn me into a different league. She couldn't take that and has never been able to take it since, end quote. Give me your thoughts on this before I rant. I think she's doing more to sell the pay-per-view than the actual company is. Well, that's a five-star answer right there. Um, I said this last week, and I even got way up here and whispered so everyone could understand. And I'm going to stick to my guns. Becky is doing pro wrestling stuff, kids. She is. That's all this is. People need to calm down. Did you hear what Becky said? She and Charlotte like each other. Stop. And there's something like, well, there's a question of what could happen Sunday, Tom. What could happen? Does anyone really believe, do you, Tina, really believe that these two women are going to shoot on each other on a live pay-per-view with the whole world watching and be unprofessional when all this money's being thrown around? Are you kidding me? No. I mean, they might really not like each other, but they're sure. professionals and they're going to do their job at the end of the day. So yeah. she's just, she's just selling it. 
That's all it is. That's all it is. This is not Brett versus Sean. People need to calm down. Yeah. Don't create, don't create a, a rivalry where there's not a rivalry. This could be a very competitive rivalry where there's maybe some weird feelings between the two. I just, this is not Brett versus Sean kids. Everyone needs to relax and it's okay. If you think that way, I guess I can't change your mind, but in my opinion, no, no. So there you go. Um, Tony says Charlotte Flair on AEW. We all know her man's in AEW. Is there, is there a world in which her contract is up and she decides to leave? What do you think? She wouldn't fit over there. Really? Why? Tell me why. Style? I don't really, it, it's, it's hard to say. Um, AEW seems a little bit more realistic, except for, you know, maybe some of the little funny characters like Luchasaurus or, you know, the alien stuff or whatever, but they don't overdo it. Hmm. I really don't know who Charlotte Flair is as a person, because all she uses is her, like, her dad stuff. So I don't, I don't know if she would fit into that more realistic environment because I don't really know who she is. Mm. I don't know. That's just me. And here's a question for you. Um, if Charlotte, a.k.a. Ashley Flair, were to go to AEW, I mean, do you think it would be, I have to be on top? Do you think she'd care? I mean, yeah. it would be a challenge for her. And, mm -hmm. and every good wrestler wants a challenge. It's not like, well, I can't go there because they won't. Well, see, that's another thing is that at the current moment, and this is not a, a bash on their women's talent or anything, they haven't, besides a select few, they haven't really built up their women's division all that well or thoroughly yet to where anyone really stands out. Um, one of the biggest issues I had with, with um, both Full Gear and all out is that you have Britt Baker who is the women's champion, right? And she is this huge star. She's a great character. People are interested in her, but you don't give anybody to match that. There was absolutely no story in her last two pay-per-view matches. Mm. It was just, Oh, look, you're the number one contender. Go wrestle her. Okay. Mm. I will. We, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's all we got. I'm like, give her something else. Give yeah. her a really strong storyline. I think they're starting to with Thunder Rosa, but, you know, I don't know. John says Charlotte is as real as they come. Do you buy that? What, what do you think? I mean, I don't know. Um, Toby says, why does Charlotte get so much heat for her dad, but Roman Rock Usos get a pass? Toby, can I be blunt with you? I mean, their daddies ain't acting up. Sorry. I mean, I love Rick. I'm a Ric Flair guy. Probably always will be. But Rick acts up. And Rick says stuff he shouldn't say. And Rick has done stuff he should never have done. And people won't excuse it because of the time period. It's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. There's not an excuse to take out certain body parts in front of anybody, much less a woman. Sorry. It's how I feel. So, I'm not excusing anything. I also wasn't there to witness any of this firsthand. But if you have a, a, a plane full of 20 people and 18 of them had the same story, that kind of tells you something. So mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, that's why. That's why, in my opinion, Charlotte gets heat. And plus, he's, you know, he's grace of all time. He's, I'm sorry, kids. He's the Michael Jordan of this business. That's how I feel. I just don't. Well, I don't really blame Charlotte for all that stuff. That has of nothing course to do not. with her. Of course not. But she's getting heat by transference because of who her dad is. I think people look at her, not saying it's fair. I think it's ridiculous that they do it. But it's guilt by, not guilt, but, you know, heat by association, maybe? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's not fair. She's not done I anything I mean, I didn't choose that. my dad, so I don't think she chose who hers was either. So There you go. There you go. Ray says, Charlotte is annoying, and I hope leaves. Oh, Adam Cole is king. Ray Stone, he, Ray has to throw that in. Will says Charlotte is entitled. Yes, she is great and beyond talented. They, meaning WWE, need to push a few more women's stars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 
Becky going in on her backstage was great. Mm-hmm. But how it, but is Charlotte entitled or is Ashley Flair entitled? If there's a difference, like I don't think Ashley Flair feels she feels she's entitled to anything. I think Ashley Flair is a team player and will do what's asked of her, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Charlotte, the character, maybe that is different. Shannon says, has any of the AW women's champions actually had a storyline feud? No. Britt Baker and um Oh, Britt. Britt Baker and who am I thinking of? Uh Sheeta? No. I mean not really. You don't think so? Mm-mm. Um they do lack in that department, that company. And uh, for a lot They're of instances, doing a better they need more. Job. They're doing a better job with the TBS tournament and telling stories than they are with the AEW women's ch- title. Um, mm-hmm. It's way more interesting to me right now. John says Steve Austin is the GOAT, only person inducted by Vince. So is, is he the GOAT because he it was inducted by Vince? Is that what you think? John, I'm curious. Is that is that your opinion? Because Vince inducted me is the greatest? Really? By the way, I love Austin. If that's your opinion, yeah. go with God, brother. Um, I think Austin's in the I think Austin's in the top. I think Austin's in the top ten for me personally. Yes. Am mm-hmm. I do I believe he's number one? I personally don't. If you want to hang your hat on that, I guess do what you want. But Vince putting you in the Hall of Fame, by the way, his Hall of Fame. He makes the shot. He calls the shots. Pro wrestling writers weren't polled. Fans weren't polled. One dude has the call, and he says it's the Hall of Fame. So I'm supposed to take that as, I don't know. I'm going to Dutch you, pal. But isn't it your Hall of Fame? Isn't it yours? Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's Vince's opinion, he says. That's Vince's opinion. So Vince's opinion is that Steve Austin was the greatest of all time. You really believe that? Be honest with me, John. Be honest. Yikes. Let's talk about something we all can't wait for. Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. I got to move in my chair. <sighs> Survivor Series. Oh, Damian Priest defending the United States Championship. Actually, he's not. This None of this is a title for title. It's just matches. Mm-hmm. Damian Priest versus Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. I think this will be the best match of the night, in my opinion. Oh, hands down. No doubt. Um, Raw Tag Team Champions, RK Bro versus SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. WWE Champion, thank goodness he still has it, Big E, versus the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch versus SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair. Uh, Team Raw versus Team SmackDown Women's 5-on-5 traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Zelina Vega. Um, Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. Um, and I cannot rem- I'm blanking on her name all of a sudden. The fifth member. Oh, Carmella, that's it. Oh, it's Queen Zelina. My apologies. Uh, against Sasha Banks, Shotzi. Used to be Shotzi Blackheart, not anymore. Shotzi. I wish I could get signed by WWE so I could just be Tom. Uh, actually, I wouldn't be Tom. I'd be like Trevor. They named me like Trevor Kincaid instead of Tom Clark. That's what, it, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, Shayna Baszler, Natalia, and newcomer. It says, and newcomer, Tony Storm. She's had matches and she was in the Queen's Crown Tournament. I don't know if you just heard what I said. She's a newcomer, freaking Tina. Come on. She was mm-hmm. also on the Evolution pay-per-view and won her match. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Um, yeah, they don't want to talk about that. So just, they didn't have, um, and then we have team raw versus team SmackDown men's five on five traditional survivor series elimination match. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, uh, Bobby Lashley, Austin theory. Other side, we got Jeff Hardy, King Woods, Corbin Moss. Cause I'm not going to name other stupid names. Drew McIntyre. Yeah. So I don't know what to tell you. This is um and a mystery. There? It's a mystery, dude. There's a mystery. Who's the mystery dude? <gasps> who is it? I don't know. I don't care either. Powerhouse hop. That's who it is. Yes. It's Here's hook. what I'll say. <laughs> He's yeah. gonna his chips. <laughs> Sin hook. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. 
this is probably going to be a really good card. It's a really yeah. good card on paper. It's probably going to be a pretty good show. Yeah. Um, they're just not doing anything to build it up. I, I, there's, there's no one on this card with a couple of different exceptions that I don't, I'm not sitting here going, why are they on the card? It's all good. And mm -hmm. I, I like a lot of these talents, but dude, I, the writing here, if there is any, in my opinion, is not clicking. It's not clicking for me personally. Mm -mm. I, I just, I, it's hard for me to watch WWE's product anymore. Yeah, the camera is. cuts, the camera cuts back and forth, you know, like when yeah. there's an attack and the camera's here and here and here and here. And I was watching it the other night because I was watching AEW clips. AEW doesn't do too well with theirs either. Oh, it was bad. But like it's that where you can't see, you can't even tell the punch happened because it's the camera's here and it's here and it's here and it's here. And it's like, oh, it's sort of that spastic, you know, the guys having a seizure kind of filming. I just don't understand that. I, I don't just don't either. get that. But here's the thing, kids. Someone in that company, Vince, thinks that, excuse me, Vince does. Vince thinks it's awesome. I know. I mean, he's the boss. He's got all the cash. What do I know? Uh, yeah, it's it's all kinds of weird. Um, listen, here's the same thing I'll say about every big event. I hope everyone goes into it uh, safe and comes out safe. I hope they have a great show. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope there's some good matches. I'll probably check it out. I just yeah. For me, it's just a that company, and for me personally, I'm not feeling it. Um, yeah, but there's your card. Um, so yeah, it, it, again, who's going to check it out by the way, SmackDown preview, um, SmackDown's tonight in case you didn't know. So we will see what happens. Um, uh, let's see. All right. SmackDown preview from the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. It's the go-home show, of course, for the Survivor Series. Um, we will see what happens. I, I expect a lot of uh, uh, face-offs tonight. I expect a lot of, uh, you know, well, I'll, I'll show you something on Sunday. No, uh I'll show you. And might drop moments and that kind of thing. I don't really have a major pre uh, preview for you because I don't think they've even posted one yet. Probably so, not. Uh, yeah, they're just going to... They really I, haven't been posting their matches that they're going to have lately. Yeah. Maybe one. Yeah. I think the only reason why there was one the other week was because it was Roman Reigns and Xavier Woods. So, yeah. Shane says, What I dislike what WWE is doing is the backstage interviews at the gorilla position with both wrestlers. I've never liked that, where they have to tell everyone to be quiet and they clear the space out because you know there's usually like 10 people back there, right. but everyone's cleared out and are having to be quiet because now they're acting like there's no one behind the curtain at all, ever, when we know that Vince is in their headset screaming at them. All yep. the time. All the time. He's he's still doing that. Like Renee Young was like, she like as recently as like a month ago was talking about him yelling in her in her ears on the headset. Like, what are you doing? I think I read somewhere that Michael Cole has lost thirty percent of his hearing or something like that. I'm not surprised. It's crazy. Not surprised. So yeah. Um. One more thing to hit on here. The ratings. There it is. This week, Raw, 1.58. Up from 1.55. Don't anybody read anything into that. I just made a sound effect. Relax. Um, NXT, 574. Down from last week, 603. SmackDown, yet to be decided. Last week, 2.1 million. And that, my friends, opens up the floor at the hour five mark. Not too shabby, if I say so myself. This is your opportunity, kids, to say whatever you want. Keep it clean. Don't curse. Okay? No. I run a PG show here. I don't like cheap heat. Don't give me no cheap heat. So, I love that. The kids know better. They don't, they're not going to be cursing. If they do, I kick them out. I've only ever kicked one person out, and I'm not going to tell you why. But mm -hmm. I blocked him because he just kept on and kept on. So I blocked him. He's messaging me after the fact. Hey, how come I can't, I can't tell anything out? I said, because you got blocked. That's why. How come? Mm -hmm. So I told him. I said, I don't allow that on my show. So you could do that on somebody else's time. I said, we're done. This guy that's messaged sweet. me all the time. Got It got weird. And I'm like, nah, I'm done. We're, I'm over this. All of my nieces and nephews, I have, um, I have eight of them. Mm. All of them watched my show on Peaches and Power Bombs. 
Go check it out on YouTube and Facebook, by the way. <laughs> Shameless plug time. Yes. And they all watch my show. And I'm like, I don't want my babies to hear all that. So, of course, you know, I don't talk like that anyway. So I don't mind the show. I'm not going to say I don't talk that way, but I just don't do it on the air. So um, I, I, I don't mind the shameless plug, but it's almost like people just do things because they want to get paid. Right. And that's just really sad. Wayne's World nice. reference. You like this cup? You That's like cool this cup. shirt? Oh, you can get all this and much more. Tinyurl.com slash Tom Clark Pods, P-O-D-S. Get your merch, baby. Get it today. You'll love it. You'll thank me for it. It fits great, works great, is great. Go do it today. You buy something, send it to me, I'll sign it. See, I'll go the extra mile. Yeah. Chris says, when is Tina going to be back on or with her co-host? We got to have you and Sarah on the show at the same time. Yes, that would be great. Tom is a friend. We try. We try to lift each other up where we can, right? Oh. Um, Shannon says, Tina, please come back more often. It was fun to have you on and have a women's thought and perspective. I love that. Thank you so much, Shannon. That means right. a whole lot. That means everything right there. He's always trying to fight with me. You know I'm not a, a Packers fan. E. You know this. Stop. Never. Toby says, and once again, the Tom needs a new pair of shoes. You better believe that, baby. Baby <laughs> needs a new pair of shoes all day long. All day long. I'm just, hey, I'm, not, I'm, hey, listen, I don't mind shilling my stuff. I got this good stuff. Ray always hits me with the hip hop questions. Beastie Boys or Tribe Called Quest. Oh, Ray, don't do that to me. And if Adam Cole invited you and family for a, a, a Friendsgiving and there was room for one more, can I come, please? Ray, you can come as long as you bring the potato salad. That's one. Number two, I am not choosing between Beastie Boys and Tribe Called Quest. It is not happening. It is too hard. I, I, Ray, which one for you? You have to choose, Ray. You tell me. Ray, make sure I, there's no raisins in the potato salad either. That's oh, gross. That Who does that? That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, some people do it. It's, uh, I like raisins, but like, I oh, not in that. We don't do that down here in the South. So, right. That's that mess up north. That's that mess up north, she says. <laughs> we can't just have any old re weird food on Turkey Day. <laughs> oh my God, that's fun. I should have done that a whole lot more. Toby says, Tina, favorite wrestler of all time? Of all time? Mick Foley. Wow. Interesting choice. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's uh, he's one of a kind. That's for sure. Yeah. Ray, Ray has chosen. Ray has chosen tribe. All right. I can't hate that. Tina's awesome. Why you hate Adam Cole? I don't hate Adam Cole. You asked me if he was my favorite wrestler, and I said no. <laughs> that doesn't Ray, mean I hate him. <laughs> Ray, this is for you. There we go. Oh, Shannon's got one for you. Favorite women's wrestler of all time? Um, it's a toss up. Um, you know, I I grew up in the '90s, so I'm probably going to say it's either between Lita and Bailey. I really like both of those. Hmm. So. Uh, good choices. Mm. Cherie says raisins, pickles, eggs, potatoes, mayo, and mustard, salt, and pepper. Oh, there you go. That's all you need. It's all you need. <laughs> uh, my wife's grandmother would make a uh, potato salad with onions in it. I love onions, but she'd put uh, onions in it, and she knew to make me a separate bowl with no onions because she knew I didn't like it. I'm like, Wrong. potato salad should not be crunchy. Are you kidding? No, right, right. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, Carlos says, what's the last wrestling event you went to? Uh, me? Go ahead. Um, well, actually I went, uh, to an AEW Dynamite back in February of 2020, right before everything shut down. Is that the last one? Yeah. But however, I will be going to AEW Dynamite December 1st in Decatur, and then nice. I will be at NWA Power on Monday, uh, December the 6th. Nice. So I'm Very going to cool. Two in one week. Very cool. Last yeah. one for me was uh, 
was all out um, Chicago. Um, Ring of Honor's last show is Final Battle on December 11th in Baltimore, and I'm seriously contemplating taking the boy and driving up there. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. Um, there's still tickets available, so I haven't decided yet. We'll see. We shall see. It's um, kind of depressing. I would, yeah. I would feel like I would be witnessing a death. But you know what? There to support the talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. might be cool. Plus, it's an it's an excuse to see them boys. Uh, there you go. We've been to uh, three Ring of Honor shows. Okay. Two or three. Yeah. Always a fun time. They always put on a good show. Tim says, Tina, your dark horse to win the TBS Women's Championship. My dark horse? Hmm. Hmm. I kind of see it being a toss up. Um, I kind of see Jade winning, but I don't know if she's a dark horse or not. I love the idea of two women's titles. I really yes. do. Because yeah. not all of those women can be the champ. Right. And if they can't, then you introduce another title that's not necessarily a competitive title with the women's world champ but it's one that could be a bragging rights kind of title, you know? Yeah. It's like, you might have that belt Baker, but I got the one that all these women really want. Yeah. And I'm having the best matches of the night. Are you? Yeah. I've defended yeah, this title. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing. Since they did the first AEW women's title as a, uh, it was Riho and she was a face. I kind of see them doing the first TBS uh, champion as a heel. So that's why I'm going with Jade. There you go. That's a good call. Shan says, what do you think of Darby Allen, Tina? I love Darby Allen. Um, there's not many just, he's just got that pure baby face feeling. And I just love that, but it's not like cheesy. So, and his match with MJF was great. I thought it, it was prime. Besides mm. Eddie Kingston and CM Punk was emotionally my favorite part of the, the store, the show, but that was probably the best match. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I like Darby a lot. I, I we saw Darby uh, in uh, in Evolve Wrestling. I have before. a funny story about Darby. Go ahead. Yeah, go Sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I was at the DDP Yoga Performance Center, and I was in training at the time. So there was the um, main per the main instructor who was teaching the class, and I was right behind him on stage doing all the modifications for you know the people to follow along with. Darby Allen walks in because he's about to take a class with us, and he sits his mat right right on the floor right in front of me. But I didn't realize who he was at the time because AEW just started, so I was still trying to. Um, figure out who everybody was. He looked familiar and I couldn't put my hand, finger on it. But the whole time, okay, the first time he rolls his mat out and it's upside down. So I'm like, hey, you need to fix that. And so he fixes it. And then like there was one time he was in a position and his foot was directly behind him. And if he stayed that way, he was going to hurt himself really bad. So I had to tell him to move his foot out. <laughs> so so after after the class and everything, and we're walking out, and I stand there and I go, "Oh crap, that was Darby Allen," and he thinks I'm a jerk because I was telling him what to do the entire time. It was funny. I, you're telling him to watch his foot; he's going to hurt himself. This same guy throws himself self down a flight of stairs in a stadium. You know what I'm saying? I know, but in order to <laughs> to be able to do that, DDP Yoga will help him do that. Oh, so that's a great answer. Him. I didn't want him to hurt himself during DDP yoga because that's what's supposed to be helping him. Man, that's a sales pitch right there. Sorry. Yes, Tom. He throws himself down stairs, Tom, but if he did this correctly, he'd be able to do that safely. That's a great answer, actually. I'm all about that. Shannon just wants me to hit the button because you're asking how you feel about Cameron Grimes. To the moon. Uh-oh. Know what that means. I'm going to the moon! I love him. He's so good. And if you don't like that, you can kiss my grin. There you go. Shannon knows what time it is. Yeah. All right. We're doing a couple more. We're getting out of here because Tina's got life to get back to. And I have something 
similar. So let's see. Uh, Will, I'm not putting your comment up there. Are you saying that to what I clicked or you just want to hear the button? I didn't hit the hot garbage button at all during this show. Hey, listen, we're not going to be here next week. Spoiler alert, kids. We're not going to be here next week. Are we? Let me think. I haven't decided yet. I'll let you know. I haven't decided yet. I got stuff going on next Friday, but we may be here. We'll wait and see. I know Phil and I will not be recording an episode. Usually we record every Thursday, do an episode of the 6M podcast. We're not doing one so he can enjoy Turkey Day. Right. And I can as well. Speaking of Turkey Day. <laughs> All right. All right, kids. One more. Make it good. I'm just going to click. Ray says, Happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate you, brother. Um, let's see. One more. Victor, you're my man, dude. I'm sorry I didn't give you a shout out. The mystery man is the undertaker. We're going to end on this, Tina. Um, Taker has come out recently. It's something to the effect of he's he's having surgeries and these are, there's no chance of a comeback. I'm like, are people still asking this guy? Like, like let it go. Are we, were you a big Taker fan? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What did you think about all the multiple comebacks? Were you okay with it? Did what at what point for you did it become, oh, take or stop? You know what I mean? I think he should have ended with the Roman Reigns match when he left his coat and hat in the ring. Cause that match wasn't horrible and that would have been a good one to hang his hat on. Mm. Um Yeah, there after um after the Brock Lesnar stuff and he got really hurt after that. It was just going downhill after that. So I was like, okay, I think it's time. I love you and it hurts my heart. And I'm so sorry because this is my childhood, right? It's our childhood. We don't want to let go of that, but we have to. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so funny when you get to know who these men and women are, like their other personalities and you don't really like stuff they say. And I'm, you know, I got thoughts on Taker that I'll say for another day, but, uh, Taker as a, as a wrestler in the ring, much different story than the guy that we're kind of getting to know for me personally. But um, I never wanted to see the guy hurt. I always wanted to see him ha- healthy. And, you know, I kind of, I, I think I'm in the same boat with you. I don't know why, I don't know how it didn't mean something. That that gesture, and it's not about Roman. I, you know, they, they change their minds all the time. They change as the wind blows. So it's not like, well, they took that from Roman. Stop it. Roman's the top guy. The minute Roman's that dude, fine. the minute that dude sits in the locker room, Vince says, I like him. And they tie their horses to him, said, stop. But like this whole notion of I'm going to take off my gloves, my hat, my coat, and leave it in the ring, which is what you do when you leave. And, and then, no, I'm back. What? What? Why? Yeah. Like it just felt weird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's very weird. Kids, guess what? That is all for us. I want to thank everyone for showing up here today. And I'm going to be straight with you. We're probably going to be here next week because it's going to be the day after Turkey Day. I'll let you guys know what I decide. All right. And if we choose not to be here next week, it's going to be because I'm letting you guys enjoy family time. Some people have their stuff on Fridays. We don't want to take away from anybody's Thanksgiving. So in the meantime, That was a turkey saying thank you. Thank you to Tina. Tina, before we get out of here, shamelessly plug your content for the people out here. Go. Okay. Well, uh, check out Peaches and Power Bombs on Facebook and on YouTube. We are not, we don't only just do podcast stuff. We also put out uh, really cute little videos where we uh, do wrestling storylines in like a bed kids bedtime story fashion i read it out like that so those are a lot of fun to make so check those out i did one on hangman adam page and i did one on mjf and Very good we stuff. got a few more coming out and Very i also have stuff. a uh, article coming out uh later on today for wrestling rumors there so. you go right here on the wrestling rumors kids what more could you ask for and where else can they find your writing have you said that um it's been a while but you I do have some stuff on Wrestling Inc. as well, but it's it's been a few months since I've written anything for them. But they're they're really good people to work with. So, well, if you guys don't follow Tina on the Facebook, make that happen, kids, so you can stay up to date on her stuff. As she said, her column will be coming out later today. Uh, 
You want to give the kids a sneak preview on who you wrote it about? Eddie Kingston. Oh, there it is. All right, Tina, thank you so much for joining us here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I had a good time. Absolutely. There she is, kids. Tina Miller from Peaches and Power Bombs. Listen, guys, we appreciate you. Sorry about the fuzziness. I'm naturally fuzzy. I got the beard. What can I do? However, this fuzziness here, we're going to have to, yeah, it is what it is. Listen, man, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I love you guys. You guys are the best. Do me a favor. All of you out there, this is important. Everybody gather around, all 14 of you, okay? Get in close and listen. I want everybody to have a happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving day. Um, when I say healthy, try not to ever do it. There's going to be more food the next day. Take it in stride. Take it from a guy that's lost a whole bunch of weight. There'll still be food tomorrow. So there you go. But otherwise, enjoy yourself. Uh, thanks again, kids. We appreciate you hanging out as always. Everybody have a great holiday weekend next week, or excuse me, the coming up. And everybody have a great weekend this weekend. Watch yourself some pro wrestling. Um, get yourself out there and do your thing. And we, again, folks, we do appreciate your business as always. All right. We'll see you soon. That's it for us, folks. See you next time. Tom Clark's main event. <laughs>